topic that I've actually been um, not wanting to talk about, <laughs> but it's what the Lord gave me before Pastor asked us to speak. And then when Pam said, hey, Pastor, invited us to speak, I said, that's why I have that message. I knew it was for Living Hope DC. And so um, we're just glad and honored to be with you all this morning. And the topic that the Lord gave me for this morning is how to discern between good and evil. How to discern between good and evil. So why don't we um, open up in prayer, if it's okay with you all. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for the church of God. I thank you for truth. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us discernment, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God, that you use your spirit to bring light to the darkness. Lord God, to help us to discern between what is good and what is evil. Lord God, I just pray that you would speak to us. This yes. morning, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that I would decrease right now and that you would increase, Lord, and that you just speak through Sam and I this morning, Lord Jesus, only truth and all in love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to open up with Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. And it's a pretty common scripture. I've got lots of scriptures today and probably a lot of what... I will say this morning is going to be obvious to us as believers, um, as Christians, but I think some of it is to speak to the spiritual realm and to declare some of what I'm going to say to the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah chapter five, verses 20 and 21. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. So today, now more than ever, we see all the time how frequently evil is considered good and good is considered evil. Christian beliefs are criticized for being unloving, intolerant, and closed-minded. We know good is good and evil is evil. But how do we discern? Because there's a lot of people who might disagree with what we as Christians believe is good and what we as Christians believe is evil. How do we discern? <clears throat> because our world is so confused and lost, and they are wise and right in their own eyes. We know, and this is going to seem like, an, again, an obvious statement. We know what is good and what is evil by reading the Word of God, our Holy Bible that we have in front of us. That is how we know what is good and what is evil. Second Timothy 3.16 tells us, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Truth is truth, whether you're a Christian or not. Truth does not change with time as years go by. Truth doesn't change with the country that you live in. Truth doesn't change with your culture. Question is, are we living in the truth? Over 50 years ago, we know in the United States that teachers were prohibited from speaking about God and from praying in the public schools. So where does that leave us in terms of what we're teaching our children? Well, I've spent about 10 years working in schools, public and private schools, um, charter schools, both in the United States and outside of the United States, as both a teacher and a school counselor. And I've spent a lot of time over the past few years researching schools, both in the United States and in Spain, to try to make the best choice for our boys, for what school to go to. And one thing that I've found is that schools today pride themselves on teaching open-mindedness, tolerance, and gender equality. And this all sounds good, right? In theory, these things sound good. But the problem is, is that in practice, what happens is it's open doors for teachings that are completely contrary to the truth in the word of God. For example, some schools through the books that they use and through the vocabulary and the ways that they address the children um, are teaching our children that they should be able to decide if they want to be a boy or a girl, regardless of their physical makeup. Many schools are now requiring boys in schools to even use the same bathroom. But the Bible teaches us that and it's actually very common here in Spain. We have a lot of unisex restrooms where 
I'll be in the bathroom and men just walk right in there and it doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> um, and the truth in the Bible is that men and women were created in different ways. In the most basic account of when the first man was created and the first woman was created, Genesis 2-7 tells us that the first man was formed of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. And Genesis 2.22 is the creation of woman in a separate verse. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. The Bible tells us that women and men have unique and different strengths that complement one another. We were both, yes, we were both of equal value in the eyes of God, and we were both created in the image of God, but we were created differently with different purposes. And we're called to do different things. For example, obviously a woman, only a woman, can give birth to a baby. Praise the Lord, baby Azusa. <laughs> and men are physically stronger. Now, I don't know about you all, but sometimes if I can't open a jar, I'll call Brother Sam to come and help me out. Usually he can open it. Usually he's stronger than I am. And he can get that jar open. <laughs> but I can't get it open. <laughs> Um, you know, and there's other areas both in the schools and outside of schools. Homosexuality is accepted and celebrated. Leviticus 18.22, however, tells us that this is an abomination and that the first marriage was between a man and a woman. Genesis 2.24 says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the fact is, is that the more homosexuality is practiced, the closer we as a human race will become We'll, be, we'll get to extinction. And this is the devil's plan, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There was a period of 10 days where Xander had to be confined with his uh, pre-K class. And so the teacher sent us their materials. And one of the videos that the children watch in, in school every morning um, was sent to me to show to Xander. Um, and it's a good morning song. It's something that they watch every day and it's, it's shown with a video. And in the video, it's people waking up in the morning, and the very first image, this is a Christian school, the very first image is two men waking up in bed together. And so I brought this to the attention of the teacher. I said, we chose this school because it's a Christian school, and it is um, declaring to teach Christian values, and so I brought this to the teacher's attention, and she said, you know, I didn't recognize that before, I didn't see that was there. She said, I, never, I, don't, I don't see it as a negative image she said but I apologize that it offended you I said it didn't offend me I said but we did choose the school because it it um, declares that it teaches Christian values and that's what we want to teach our our boys this world has become so desensitized to what is good and what is evil people are crying out for peace for safety and for unity people want unity people want to feel safe people want peace and we as Christians cannot forget there's only one way to true peace. Jesus is the only way to true peace. Jesus is the only way to true safety and unity in this world. Living hope, we're such a great example of how unity can, God, Jesus can bring unity among diversity. No matter what our backgrounds and our, our political beliefs are, only Jesus can bring that unity. And we can see that across the globe. Our world has never been more divided than it is today. The devil is driving the world to a place of desperation. People are being driven to a place where they will do whatever it takes to feel safe. Perhaps even get a microchip implanted in their body. I don't know if you all heard um, Pastor Art Wilson speak at General Conference, but he attended a global United Nations leadership meeting where there was, there's a legitimate plan that global leaders are all um, working towards, and it involves a microchip as part of the solution to the world's global problems. First John chapter 3, verses 24 through 4, verse 4 says, Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they, are, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 
By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Living hope, you are of God and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. I'm so grateful that I got to experience this firsthand because when I was 13 years old, most of you know my testimony. There's so many things God has delivered me from and, and saved me from, but when I was 13 years old, I almost died from drinking too much alcohol. And I said I would never drink alcohol again. And then a year later, I got back into drinking again in that social scene. But that led, over several years, it led to me being in bondage to alcohol. And there were times when I wanted to stop drinking, but despite my best efforts, I couldn't. After 30 years, I began to really seek God. Because the truth in this world brought me to a place of insecurity. The truth in this world brought me to a place of bondage. When I tried to stop drinking on my own without Jesus, people told me, it's okay. One glass of wine is okay. But it wasn't. It wasn't okay for me. And it wasn't okay because drinking always deterred me from living in the will of God, from hearing that still, small voice. It was the door the enemy used to lead me into a downward spiral of sin. I tried to quit drinking on my own efforts for years, but I always ended up back drinking again. <laughs> just killed their notes. Just stole my notes. Then God led me to a church called Living Hope DC. <laughs> Thanks, babe. I walked into the doors of Living Hope DC, a church that preaches the truth. I repented, I was baptized in Jesus' name, and I began seeking the Holy Ghost. And I had been attending Living Hope for about six months when I attended that missionary service, and it was translated into multiple languages. This was Saturday, a Saturday service in February of 2011. And that might God filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Not only did he fill me with his spirit, but he completely delivered me from alcohol. I had absolutely no desire to drink alcohol anymore. I began to gain a deeper understanding of the word of God by his spirit. And I began to really see what was good through the eyes of God and really see what was evil through the eyes of God. By the Holy Spirit, it gave me power and strength to not only understand my Bible and its truth more, more clearly, but to really live in the truth of the Word of God and to live God's perfect will for my life. Being filled with the Holy Ghost really helped me to understand what greater is he living in me means. Revelation chapter 22, verse 7 says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And verses 11 through 14 say, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to to the tree of life. Who wants the right to the tree of life? I don't know about y'all, but I want that. And they enter through the gates into the city. I look forward to that day where we can all enter through the gates into the city of heaven. The things that we read affect our soul. <laughs> Amen. The spirit of what we read affects our spirit. A lot of times when I read the news, I feel troubled. If I read a horror book, I'm going to feel scared. If I read a comedy, I'm going to laugh. If I read a drama, I might feel in suspense. But when I read my Bible, I feel hope. When I read my Bible, I feel loved. When I read my Bible, I feel faith. When I read my Bible, I have the truth. Amen. So how do we discern between what is good and what is evil? We discern by reading our Bible and allowing the Holy Spirit of God to give us that discernment. Living Hope DC, read your Bibles more frequently 
more fervently than you ever have before as if your life depended on it because it does. James 1, 21 through 22 says, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We must not be hearers of the word, but doers. I'll never forget the first day I walked into Living Hope DC. You all are doers of the word. I felt the love of God like I've never felt it in my life when I walked into that church. That is what it means to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. We need to be in the church when the doors of, of Brother Libby's church open up in Imesville. We need to be in that church in person. When God has given us that freedom and that right, we need to be in that church hearing the anointed word of the preacher. That's also going to help us to discern between good and evil. Hallelujah. We must not just read our Bible, but let the spirit of God set us free. Yes, I was delivered of alcohol about 10 years ago, but God still continues to work on me. I still need to be set free from other things. It's not a one-time deal. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes, Jesus delivered me from the bondage of alcohol, but so many of you have other testimonies. You guys, we could all share our testimonies of being delivered and set free by the word and by the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit gives us that power to live in his will, free from bondage. It helps us to discern between good and evil. The Holy Spirit brings us revelation as we read our Bibles. And so in closing, Romans chapter 12, verse 21 tells us, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In these last days, the church of Jesus Christ needs to rise up and overcome evil with good. We need to speak truth to the lies. We need to bring light to the darkness. The world is crying out for Jesus, yet many of them have no clue what it is they really need. But we know what Jesus has done for us. I have a neighbor. She's an American, but she's lived in Spain for about 20 years now. And she's a single mother of three. Her, her son is in and out of the hospital with mental illness. And she is so full of anxiety and worry. And she also says she does not believe in God. But God has placed her in our path. And God has a plan for her. She's tired and she wants to move back to the United States. But the truth is moving to another country isn't the answer. Jesus is the answer that she's looking for. And she's always asking me for advice. What would you do if this was your son? What would you do? And my answer is so often to pray, to pray. And she repeatedly reminds me, I'm not religious. I don't believe in God. But a few days back, she let me pray with her for the first time. And I know the spirit of God is working. And I know she's so hungry. She doesn't yet know that it's Jesus that's going to set her free. That it's Jesus that's going to give her peace. It's Jesus that is going to save her and her children in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a young lady named Shamim who is attending a non-denominational church in the other side of Barcelona. And, um, she was doing her own personal Bible study, reading her own, reading the Bible on her own. She received the revelation of the need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. She asked her non-denominational pastor, will you please, I got this revelation that I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Will you please baptize me in the name of Jesus? Well, her non-denominational pastor would not do it. So she looked up churches that baptize in the name of Jesus. Last week, she was baptized at Los Pentecostales de Barcelona. Not only was she baptized in water in the name of Jesus, but she went home later that night and God filled her with the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And she came to the church last Thursday for the first time. I praise God for all that he is doing, not just here, but around the world. Because um, we are living... We are living in the last days. People are desperate for Jesus. The Holy Ghost is working. God is working. We need to preach the good news to our family. We need to preach the good news to our, our classmates. We need to preach the good news to our coworkers. Because in the few, few months we've been here in Spain, we've seen 
so many backsliders return from return back to the church, return to the truth. So when I say preach the good news, it's not always it's not always through your mouth, it's not always through your words, it's in the way that you continue to live sanctified and holy and faithful to the church of God, faithful to the truth and the apostolic truths and doctrines that we know. And so we need to continue steadfast. Living Hope DC, continue steadfast because it is time to reap. This end time harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen.